Thank you no Terror, Terror and Resonance Episode 7, so happy to finally be able to review this. Um, I'm not sure how I want to do these reviews, um, but I think I'm just going to breeze through it. Not really talk so much about, because this is my first Zanky no Terror review, I haven't really... I've been watching it all season, and I've been wanting to review it, but just been tiptoeing around it. I don't think I really want to discuss the events that take place so much about so much as I just want to discuss what I liked and I didn't like and some of the formal aspects. So this episode, first of all, music once again superb. Yoko Kano, the music is gonna be crazy. There's like three or four tracks that I've heard thus far. Um, generally, the track that keeps playing before the intermissions, at least in episode four and six, um, and the one that played at the beginning of this episode when they were showing Shibazaki interacting, that. Those, I just, they're not on the soundtrack, so I'm not sure about that, but I have a theory, which I'll get into later um, in this review. Um, the chess game between 5 and 9, brilliant 5, is a crazy, she's insanely brilliant, but she has proven herself time and time again in the last couple episodes in her introduction. She's sadistic, insane, sick, twisted, and I cannot wait to see the backstory between all these Vaughn members and whatnot, but next up, you know, 12 moving in the background, you know, disarming police officers, and then, you know, basically being able to move as he pleases to try and find the location. That was pretty tight. Lisa helping out with the distraction with the flares and everything, despite being clumsy about it and drawing Five's attention on the security cameras by apologizing to everybody. It was still really great to finally see Lisa step up and help out. Um, Shibazaki, Shiba-san, the boss. He kind of fucked up this episode by, you know, contesting Five at the end because her plan was, you know, to have everything go off without a hitch and, you know, Nine contacts him in order to save Lisa because she gets captured halfway through and is put on the plane and everything. So, contacts him trying to save Lisa and he goes against Five in that instance where he already knows that Five is pulling the strings with the with you know the FBI's involvement and you know his forces involvement and everything so there's all of that not sure how that's gonna go but my assumption is that Fi is gonna have him drop off the case entirely he'd probably be reprimanded and it'll cause Shibazaki to go on some vigilante shit which is Shibazaki vigilante is much tighter than Shibazaki pinned down by the system so that might be tight and you see at the end of this episode, Five just kind of twiddling Lisa's student ID in her hand. And I'm just like, her face, I was just like, oh my god, she is insane. And I just, I need to know now, we're seven episodes in, we only got five more, it's an 11 episode series. I'm trying to find out the backstories and everything that's going on. If there's other Vaughn members, I'm assuming there's at least 12 of them, because we have 12 as the last number when we've been introduced to Five. So I'm wondering if we'll get any more numbers involved, what the, you know, what their plan is and their goal is. I'm just really excited to see all of that. This series has been incredible, this episode. Flawless, Watanabe's pacing, the chess game, all of the things he incorporated. No riddles per se this time, but Five's brilliant switch with the plane and then, you know, her point being this one terminal, but the plane coming around to it, that was amazing. So. This episode, honestly, 9.5 out of 10, 9 out of 10, it was, it went off beautifully, music, everything, arrangement, animation, just beautiful, and 9, tactical as ever, winning the chess game, you know, being able to do it all his head while moving, whereas 5 was sitting there in the control room, and then also, you know, figuring out how to stop this, except, there's, there's some issues I have with how it went down, but it's irrelevant, 9 out of 10, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, my theory about the songs now is that since we're seven episodes in, and I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section about this, or if anybody has any knowledge about this, because I don't know, I'm going to go look it up right now, actually, or see if I can find something, or at least pinpoint these songs, because if these songs aren't on here, I'm thinking there's either a part two to this OST that'll come out now, or there will be a second season of this show, just because of two reasons, the pacing, um, and the short, the brevity of it, where we have 11 episodes, we've only got so much information, and there's just a small amount of time to cram in all the reveals and exposition we would need, 
Um, I think that it might end on some sort of cliffhanger hanger or something that shows that there'll be a second season. Might even get like a PV at the end of the credits or something or a confirmation of season two. I think Watanabe would be <laughs> interested in doing something like that. Um, and I think that the studio and everyone, the network, would be interested in that. I think it might already be planned, and that's why the, s the soundtrack that Yoko released only has these 18 tracks, and then the rest of the tracks that we're hearing now will be on the second season soundtrack. Um, and they'll reuse some songs from this OST, obviously, but also have some newer songs and the ones that we've been hearing here. So that's just my theory. Let me know what you guys think. I could be completely wrong. I'm probably wrong. But... Yeah, anyway, episode 7 of Zankino Terror, amazing. Peace.